Hello there YouTube, this is going to be my first review in quite some time, as anyone that has watched all my old videos will know. And as you can see, this is going to be about the TM SIG 226E2, uh, sort of an upgraded model of their old 226. Uh, sorry I haven't made a video in a while, just been quite busy with stuff, but um, I'm going to have a new sort of series of reviews, which would be great if you would watch. I'll hopefully get those up soon and got quite a new collection. Um, so yeah, this review is on the TM 226E2, which I bought from Zero One Airsoft a few months ago for about £140, which is a decent price, I think. The old 226 goes for around 115 so it's a bit more than that, but it's not too bad. Uh, it's the usual kind of TM box with a styrofoam inside, but on the outside it is really nice. It's kind of a thin silver finish, looks really good. You can see the artwork on there, it's really nice. Get that out of the way. Inside you get the usual TM paperwork. Uh, it comes with the old 226 style manual, so uh, it, this all relates to the original 226, but uh, it's the same essentially, so everything in here applies to the new one. Uh, to show how it's been upgraded and everything, they give you this uh, little pamphlet about it, which shows all the new parts and tells you what's happened, but uh, it's all in Japanese, so unless you uh, speak Japanese, might as well discard that. You'll also get the TM uh, lineup catalogue, which I always like having, uh, which has got their complete list of uh, guns that they're producing right now, which is nice. Uh, if you get a newer model of this, if you may, you know, if you buy a, a 262 in, I don't know, 2012 at some point, I got this around Christmas, if you got a new one you'll probably get an updated catalogue. Uh, it's actually the 17th today, which is when the Shizuoka Hobby Show is opening, so we're going to see what new products TM have, so that I'm sure that will be updated soon. Anyway, inside you get the usual... Sorry about that, my camera died, and I only realised 10 minutes after, so uh, I'm going to be covering what I've already said, but none of you heard. Okay, I'll just slip this back into my homemade holder. Right, okay, so under this cover of the uh, packaging, you will see that it comes with these little dry fire things. They um, they slip inside the magazine, just there, and stop it from um, locking the slide back, which I quite like. Um, you can't use it with BBs, that's just for like shows, you know, like if you're messing around doing a production, you can see that. Also comes with 200.2 gram BBs, which are fine to use, they are high quality, uh, they're fine, TM BBs are good, so you can use those fine. Comes with the usual cleaning and jamming rod. Also comes with, uh, as you'd expect, this magazine, which is a new type of 226 magazine, which is really nice. It's based on the 15 round military style, rather than the um, civilian one that the old 226 came in, which is nice. Um, 24 BB capacity, and you can use the old magazines and the new ones in this gun. Just uh, they're totally cross compatible, so you can use the old ones in this as well, and these ones in the new one, or oh, the old ones in the new one. Anyway, uh, you can see Sig Sauer nine mm trademarks. Back is smooth, a bit scratched from all the uses this has got. Made in Japan on that side. Gas inlet valve, just like any other gas blow back. And that's a very nice magazine, it's weighty metal of course. Okay, this is going to be a bit boring because I have already done all of this, it just didn't record. Anyway, so here's the pistol. Uh, if anyone who knows much about firearms should know, this is an upgraded model of the original 226. And a few distinguishing features are the new grip, which has got quite a strange angle to it, but it's actually very comfortable. That swell fits really nicely into the palm of your hand. You can get a really nice high grip with that. It's textured similarly to a Magpul product. Try and get it to focus. Yeah, kind of a gritty surface. It's really nice. And it's a one-piece wraparound style instead of screwed on uh, plastic grips. It's not really rubberized, but still nice grips. They're held in by a few studs. And uh, <coughs> due to the differences in the frame, you can't use old P226, uh, P226 grips on this and the frames aren't compatible. 
but still, it's really nice. Uh, moving away from the nice grip, you get your uh, magazine release, which is checkered nicely. You get a really good grip on that. It's starting to wear out a bit from the amount I use this gun, but that's fine. It holds the magazine in securely. You can hear a nice click when it goes in, which is great. Very positive, and it'll slide out freely. Right, uh, moving on from that, the trigger is an upgraded kind of trigger. It's not it's not like a match trigger or anything. It's just a thinner trigger, which has got a quicker reset. It is a double action trigger, which uh, I won't bother explaining because I assume most of you know. Double action, single action with a decocker, which I'll show you in a minute. The trigger is much more crisp and kind of refined than the old trigger, and it's got a really nice reset in single action mode. So I'll show you that. I pull the trigger, gun cycles. Now listen to how quick the reset is as I release. See, there's only a few millimeters there. The old one reset around there. So it's great. You can get really, really quick shots in with this because as soon as that one shot is fired and you release, you can fire another one, which is really nice. Uh, definitely better than the old trigger. Uh, moving on, you've got the takedown lever which is same, it's the same design as the old one. You simply swing it down and the slide pops off. Now to replace the slide, I was kind of struggling with this at the beginning. I didn't really realize what you're meant to do. But uh, the chamber breech block has got to be in the lower position for it to reassemble. So with the palm of your hand, just press against the barrel. You'll see the breech block pop down. See that? If you look there, you can see the breech pop down and then you can swing it up and it'll click back into place and that's fine. You get used to it, uh, but yeah, it was a bit tricky at the beginning, so remember that. Uh, over here we've got the decocker, which is showing a bit of wear because I use it a lot. And the idea of that is when the gun is cocked, so ready to fire, if you decide not to fire or you want to take it to a safe position without doing the classic lowering, because that is dangerous, you could slip and fire the gun. What you do is you just flick the decocker down, release, and it takes the hammer to half cock. You can do that really quickly. So what I would do in a game is I would load a magazine, insert, chamber around, and then click. And now it's safe. It's quite hard to pull that trigger, so there's no chance of it going off in your holster. But when you do pull it out, you can get that first shot off really quickly, unlike a 1911 that would require cocking or slide rack. Uh, last of the controls is the uh, slide lock, which is in a very good position if you use quite a low grip. If you kind of hold your gun down here, which is which is what a lot of people do, and they kind of hold it, they teacup it, uh, that's fine because that stays out of the way. But for me, I use a really high grip, so I get as high as I can on the gun for the best control, which means that my thumb kind of hangs over that and can sometimes hold it down uh, inadvertently, which I don't really like. So what I have to do when I hold this pistol is one hand, I put on the slide lock, sorry, uh, takedown lever, so my thumb's on that, and then my other hand, my thumb lies on that thumb, but below that, so I don't start knocking it around. So that system works fine for me. Uh, so yeah, those are all the controls. They are not ambidextrous. Some of you will be upset about. SIG have never really done ambidextrous controls. Some of their newer pistols do, but they're classic... Uh, 2-2, whatever line. No, they're not ambidextrous. Anyway, sights are a three dot style, which is really nice. I like it when they come from the factory of three dots. My Glock came with the annoying kind of post and the back's kind of a white square. So I ended up replacing it with these aftermarket three dot sights because I think they look really good. Although the shiny surface of the Glock kind of reflects it, makes a double dot on the front, as you can see. Anyway, that's I, I like the Glock sights, which means I like these six sides, they're really nice. Uh, some upgraded features, as I said, are the grip over the original model, the trigger. Uh, it's got an upgraded valve knocker, that's the part that, if I take the slide off, hits the magazine, um, releases the gas. If you look down there, you'll see it pop out. There. That has been upgraded because the original one, after quite a while, has shown signs of fracturing on some models. So, reassembling it again. 
So they decided to fix that with a reinforce, I believe it's steel now, instead of whatever they use, Mazak, whatever it is. Uh, the last feature that's different to the original gun is the slide. As you might be able to see, is a slightly greyish colour. Um, I quite like that, actually. It kind of has nice contrast with the rest of the pistol. But, uh, yes, yeah, <coughs> slightly grey, so they've just added a different colour pigment. As you can see here, it says E2. Uh, E2 stands for ergonomics, no, enhanced ergonomics, I believe. And uh, so that's white, that's painted in white there. You can see the other trademarks, such as Made in Japan by Marui, ASGK, oh, it's a Japanese trademark, 9mm Parabellum on the chamber there. Turn it around. I'm trying to get it in the sun a bit, so my camera's going crazy. Can't really see that, but that says Sig Sauer P226, which is really nicely engraved. Uh, those, that's all you get with trademarks, all oh, except on the grip. It says Sig Sauer on both sides, which looks really nice. You can see it kind of shine there. That's great. So well done TM for those trademarks. They're probably not licensed, but if Sig aren't complaining, that's fine. Um, trying to think of anything else about this. Yeah, as you will know, plastic. A lot of people don't like plastic on TM pistols, and indeed it is uh, mostly plastic, 80%. Slide is plastic, grips are plastic, frame is plastic, outer barrel is plastic. Everything else, uh, all the essential parts, are metal. You will be happy to know, as you would expect from a TM pistol. And the uh, plastic actually just helps it, to be honest. It makes cycling really crisp and fast. I'm much happier with plastic parts the, than uh, metal parts, to be honest. Okay, I'm running out of time, so I should quickly finish this off. Uh, performance is great, about 280 FPS on green gas, which is the gas I would recommend for this. Excellent performance, great range due to the adjustable hop-up, which is just under the slide in here. You can see how quickly you can get to that. So it's fine for adjustment in the field. Overall, I totally recommend this. For the price I bought, it's probably my favourite TM pistol to date, and better than any other brands, to be honest. Uh, any questions, anything, just PM me or leave a comment. Uh, I'll be having some more reviews I'll be creating, such as my TM Glock 17. So if anyone's interested, uh, subscribe, like, and comment. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll have some new videos out soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.